weekend. Um, so I just woke up a little while ago and it's breakfast. Um, I just woke up like a half hour ago. And I just finished eating breakfast. Um, and yeah. <laughs> um, and I realized when I woke up this morning, I did not make a video yesterday. Sad me. Um, so I'll give you a rundown of everything we did yesterday because I'm making this so early in the morning. Um, and I'm not doing anything today. So. Not again, do that one so fast. <coughs> um, but yesterday was a half day, which, you know, I remember at one point I needed to make a vlog and then I didn't think I did. I'm like, I'm just really dumb. I have a little really on it. And I don't want to I don't really know. Um, I didn't even catch up on YouTube yesterday because I was at school and I took like 10 billion tests and then I was really tired, which is a stupid excuse, um, but I was tired. And then I went out with my mom, my mom picked me up from school, and then I was at home for like 5 seconds, and then I went back out. Because we only went home because I needed to get a couple things at home. Um, that I forgot, I didn't have with me, um, so I had to do that, and then I went back out to the park, and then went to Pierland, and I went to Barnes and Noble, and Anthropology, and other things, uh, and Anthropology, I love that store, I didn't feel good, like, the entire time we were in there, but I love it. Um, and there was this one dress, and it was so pretty, and I loved it so much. It was on sale. It was on the sale rack. So I was like, but then it was seventy dollars on the sale rack, and it was just like hit, and no, that's too much money. Just, as much as I love it, and as much as I'd be able to wear it to school, that's just too much money. I don't want to pay that much. Um, so that was that. And then there was another one, a little black dress. It was super cute, but it was really, really short, and it was $80 on the sale rack. And then there was a tank top. I can't remember if it was on sale or not, but what was up with that? Um, I think it was in the sale section. And it was $30. And you could get, like, the same thing at H&M for, like, half that price. So I was just like, mm -hmm. And that, uh, and that, as much as I love it, as pretty as it is, I don't, no, no problem, no problem, the anthropology is amazing, and I love it, but, it's so expensive. Um, <coughs> and then, I'm sorry, I think I'm coming down with a cold, I can't tell, um, yeah, then, um, the photo was blocking off, and we were going to go to a couple more stores, and all that, tired. Let's, let's just go home. And so I came home, I sat at the computer for a while, and watched like two YouTube videos, and then I passed out. So I'm like, we got home at 1 or 2, and then I didn't wake up until it was 5.30. And then, I was up until like 9.30 or something like that, and then I went to sleep. I first got a sick. I don't even know, so I'm really sorry guys. And now, obviously, I've got some serious tiredness going on. But this is what we got at Barnes & Noble. We got the winter summer. Um, so, first thing, definitely, uh, the perks of being a wallflower, which is automatically going to be transported into my backpack. Because, thing about this book, I just know that I need to read it. I don't need to read it, it's not like a hard reading, but I know that I really want to read it. <coughs> Let's see. Standing on the fringes of life offers me a new perspective, but there comes a time 
to see what it looks like from the dance floor. Since the publication of Stephen Stephen something, something, Stephen something, novel about the dilemma <coughs> of passivity, the passiv passivity versus passion has received critical acclaim, provoked discussion and debate, and grown into a cult sensation with over one million copies in print. It is a story of what it's like to grow up in high school, more intimate than a diary tells each other, are singular and unique, hilarious and devastating. You may not know where he lives, you may not know to whom he's writing, all we know is the love he shares, caught, all we know is the love he shares, caught between trying to live his life and trying to run from it, trying to run from it puts him on a strange course through uncharted territory. The world of first, the world of first dates, family drama, and new friends, the world of sex, drugs, and the rock and roll adventure show, you know that? where all you need is the perfect song on that perfect drive to feel infinite. Through Charlie, <coughs> through Charlie, Spotsky has created a deeply affecting novel that will steer you back to those loud and poignant roller coaster days known as growing up. Yeah. I'm gonna like this. I didn't even read. I was like, I need to read this book. Um, to help me find, help me find her to be a wallflower. And I had to look up who it was by. I forgot my phone. I'm like, Stephen Chobsky, something like that. Um, and then, it's like, uh, I'm just like, oh, here it is. I was like, I, I, just, I just automatically stuck in the stuff I had in my hand. I was like, there's no question, this will be read. And then, the night service. Um, I saw this in a watch my call um the entertainment wiki book section at one point. Is that picture? No. That's that's just a different part, isn't it? There are some pages that are like I like it when you can tell if they have like completely black pages that you just like oh, these red and dark pages are nice. Um But I saw it and I kind of read the little synopsis that they had and I was like, that sounds amazing. But I didn't get it when I was in my bed. So I was like, oh Barnes and Noble, I see it. Anyone it. Okay. It says <coughs> <laughs> the circus arrives without warning. No announcements precede it. It is simply there, when yesterday it was not. And from the black and white striped canvas tent, it is an utterly unique experience full of breathtaking amazement. It's called Le Cirque de Cirque de I don't know. Le Cirque de Rives, whatever. Le And it is only open at night. But behind the scenes of this competition is underway, a duel between Peter and Magician, Celia and Marco, who have trained since childhood <coughs> Excuse me. Who have, trained, who have been trained since childhood expressly for this purpose by their mercurial instructor. Unbeknownst to both of them, this is a game which <coughs> only one can be left standing. Amidst the high stakes, Celia and Marco soon tumble headfirst into love, setting off the domino effect of dangerous consequences and moving the lives of everyone, from their performers to their patrons, hanging in the valley. Right. So that one's really interesting. Read, no, from the read the page count. First to be in the wall seven. Don't feel pleasant at me for a moment. There's 213 pages. And next subject is 116 pages. Oh no, that's acknowledging. 112. And we saw my slides. My system which has kind of, you know, normal to small. 
and then let me go with a little box shirt. Yeah, a sale of two things by Charles Dickens because this is required reading. So then I'm gonna start to see this hug. Um, it was the best of time, it was the worst of time. It was the best of time, it was the worst of time. With these famous royal Charles Dickens plunged his readers into one of history's most explosive eras, the French Revolution. When the storming of the Bastille of the Steel is delivered to the relentless drop of the guillotine, Dickens vividly captures the terror and upheaval of the tumultuous period. At the center of the novel hero, Sidney Carton, a lazy alcoholic attorney general, inspired by a woman, makes this a supreme. Supreme, supreme. Mm -hmm. sacrifice on the blood stained streets of Paris. One of Dickens' most exciting novels. Dickens is a highly exciting novel, let's be honest. Do I try to make it seem more epic than it really is? I don't know, but it's a very good novel. Yeah, so obviously, you know, that the Barnes and Old Class Kids edition. Um, one thing is Barnes and Noble is ready to come now. Barnes and Noble loves you so much. So very, very much. That's just the book. This is Ed Notes. And this is all the beginning stuff. It's like the, the prelude and introduction and notes. It's almost, I have to like go through and mark where page one starts because you can't just open this book and go, okay, just start reading. The world of Charles Dickens and the Tale of the Sailor. I'm going to open up to the first page. Just, just a bunch of quotes, literally. Like, I don't care about quotes right now. Seriously. I just don't. And then, it's Chuck. I'm like, I don't want my book to be about him. I'm not a fan of Charles Dickens, you guys can tell. I'm going to have some tiny little books. Um, this one is the holidays with the mom. She's like, okay, I don't care right now. It's just this one. And it's, um, the Hobbit mom's like, this one's not even have to read this. Just, just do it. So, um, it's little bad into the Hobbit. She wanted to be left alone, quiet and comfort. But the wizard Gandalf came along with the band of homeless wards. Soon Bilbo was gone into the quest, facing evil orcs, savage wolves, and giant spiders. Speaking of giant spiders, there was a tarantula in the road and I was walking my dog literally this big. It just popped out. And it was it was freaking huge. It was like as big as my dog's head. I don't even know. And the giant spiders, um, and worse, unknown danger. Finally, it was Bilbo, alone and unaided, who had to confess had to confront the great dragon smog, the terror of the entire countryside. So I was trying to get this. This one is an apparently old classic. Um, it's just updated. So I think we're in uh a reading book because we have a side of the house. Chapters actually have names. What? Um. Oh, so 
Illustrations was aww. Not the illustration in the little page of things like that is here. I don't know if you can I think this is one of those because you can put it to the put in there. I'm really sorry, I seem really gross today. I'm sick. I swear, I'm getting sick. Maybe I'm not, but I feel like I am. Um, anyway. My eyes are the Tales is one of the most enduringly popular works of the 20th century. The Wind in the Willows is a classic of magical fantasy and enchanting wit. Hems in lyrical prose, the adventure, m adventures and misadventures of the book's intrepid quartet of heroes, Mole, Water Rat, Badger, and of course, the incorrigible code of Sisyphus. There's a fantasy to the low of myth. Reflecting the freshness of childhood wonders, the story still offers adult emerald sophistication, substance, and depth of the animal world and bodies. The author's wry, whimsical, and unfailingly inventive imagination. It is the world that the succeeding generation of both adults and young readers have found irresistible. But why say more? To use the words of the estimable Mr. Toad himself, travel, change, interest, excitement. Come inside. So, yeah, I probably didn't mess up that one. A couple times, I can't reach it. And, um, and lastly, but not leastly, is long for dummies. Because I'm a dummy, and I need to know where it was on. Um, it was from Faith Fair and Fasting to Charity and Pilgrimage. Understand Muslim life. You don't have to be Muslim to understand this one. This one guidance needs to be to the origins and practices of Islam, including the five pillars, the life cycle ritual. Sorry, the five pillars and life cycle ritual. You'll discover the magnificence of Muhammad, or sorry, the significance of Muhammad and the Quran, and meet the various Islamic You'll also see how Islam has adapted over time and read about current developments in the Islamic world. So yeah. This one is a nice expensive one. Um, it's like here, let's, let's get the not like their original thing I need to play on the thing that I'm doing in Um Yeah, it was one that I made. It would be good to have this material. Now, excuse me, I'm going to light up and hope that this is my last Um, And I'll see you all tomorrow. For real.